Thank you so much for staying with us here on Power of Breakfast this morning. As we do on Mondays, we like to start the week off with a little bit of inspiration. And I have uh, a guest in the studio who will be telling us all about her story. Janet Madoni Oko is a governance and education rights advocacy specialist. So thanks for being here. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your journey in, 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 in what you do. Your career in governance and uh, education civil rights started back in, in campus, I understand, to yeah. us about that. Well, uh, it, it's, it's, it's been a journey of, um, of, of, of really believing uh, that um, there is something, there is some contribution you can make. And I, in a good number of it has been, there, there has been something about, about fighting tribalism, though I, I actually did not know that 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 is where the direction was headed because I remember um, when we were elected student leaders then I think it's back in uh, 2002 it was sort of immediately after after the Kibaki regime you know came in and, and I remember there was a lot of hostility met against us uh, because um, usually the national politics would affect the way universities vote mm -hmm. so the same um, amount of rebellion you know against you know the status quo you know at the national level that is what happened because I remember we were um, the regime that came in um, was seen as though we were challenging the university administration it was not very easy and, 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 and I like saying, uh, you know, without fear, that at that particular time, uh, you know, the university, more university was, was really ran down. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I, you know, when we share with, uh, with the fellow student leaders, we would tell them the things we were fighting was ranging from lack of chairs, you know, in the university. Just you'd, basic. Yeah, basic things. You'd leave the hostel with your chair, mm -hmm. um, carry it to the lecture hall, because the university had really been totally ran down. So those are some of the things that we really stood firm, and, and we were like, no, look here. Um, the core business of university is studying. So if you can't even avail the common infrastructure, you know, for studying, why have we paid fees and, and you know, and things like those? Mm -hmm. So I think it was really, um, it was a vigorous campaign, which we won, but it wasn't easy because a good number of us were kicked out of the university. Right. I remember you were suspended I was suspended point. for five years, wow. you know, outside the university. And, and, I, and, I, really, um, and I really see um, a trade dimension to this because I remember vividly um, one of the times when I was uh, at, at a salon doing my hair, uh, I was the Secretary General of the Union and I, and I was uh, not a very easy Secretary General. Mm -hmm. So I remember the salonist, they, were, they didn't know it was me. Mm -hmm. So I remember them saying that you hear the villagers are looking for one Mama Ringbo. You know, the students were calling me Mama Ringbo, a replica of what Ngilu was at the national level. Mm -hmm. and, and they're looking for one Mama Ringbo because she's the one who wants to, um, you know, disturbing the administration and so on and so forth. And if they get her, you know, they, they would go ahead and say all the things that the villagers want to do to me when they get me. So I just, you know, read my magazine. I didn't even want them to know that it was me. But that, that is when I got to know that really things were not, mm -hmm. things were not that easy. And, 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 I, and I think that time uh, during our suspension, and, and our parents can bear as witness, because at that time you were supposed to come with your mother or your father, and it was not easy. Mm -hmm. Like me, I remember I was only given two minutes in the disciplinary room, and um, I was just dismissed and told that I am not uh, the first person to believe in change, mm -hmm. so I can go and implement that change where I want to go and implement it. And I was suspended for five good years. Five years. Yeah. So what was it like, first of all, being a woman uh, and, and also being in, in leadership at, at that point in time? Um, I, I think... Um, one of the things that I, I like saying is that really being 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 a woman puts you uh, a few steps behind. Uh, and and, and the, at that particular time, I remember things were not working very well for me because my dad had just passed away, and he was my motivation. My mother could not understand why mm. I'm joining politics, and you know, so my dad was the one who was telling me go go go, and now he's not there. And you know, you have you, I couldn't go back to the village because where I come from, you know, not many people make it to the university. So it was looked like, in fact, the talk around the village was that I'm very stubborn. Mm -hmm. That is why I was, you know, I was chased away from the university and, and you know, and, the, and it was very disheartening for my mother. I really, um, you know, felt sorry for her. But there was this thing inside me telling me that I did the right thing. Even if today I was to go back to the university, I am not sure there is anything I would do different. I would still do the things the way I did them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I had a conviction, you know, deep down me that surely, uh, there is nowhere I went against God's plan for my life, and this was not me because I remember most of the people would uh, would tell me now they would share with me and they would ask me, Janet, are you for real? You know, when you when you are addressing the students, you look you look different. You know, there is something that comes from deep inside you. There is a lot of conviction in what you are saying, and and, and it wasn't easy. 
as a matter of fact, I actually hooked in, in Nakuru because uh, during the time that yeah during my suspension mm -hmm. because you have to make ends meet uh your parents cannot support you you don't even want them to know you know where you are and things like those mm -hmm. so it wasn't a very easy moment but i think um with with discipline and and sort of this thing that tells you that i was suspended for the right thing i did the right thing this is me and then um the sort of belief that i am made in god's image and likeness God is responsible for my situation at that particular time and, and I really thank God for how things turned out for me because we were able to appeal and um, I really thank God for some of the leaders of the nation at that particular time mm -hmm. and I remember Silas Hiego is the one that, that really intervened for our case and when they listened to it um, he, really, he really felt pain as a parent and he was like there was no single reason as to why we were supposed to have been suspended for all that amount of time and I was lucky to only spend three years outside outside mm -hmm. campus and then I went back and, and, and I was able to, to graduate. Yeah. During that time you also met your husband, is that correct? Yeah, um, I, I, you know, I, I, I really thank God for a number of uh, circumstances because I remember my husband was very supportive of me uh, during the whole university time. He was part of my campaigns when I was campaigning to be the Secretary General of the university. And so he's, he's a friend, mm -hmm. you know, really, he's, he's, he's a friend. And, and he stuck with me even during the suspension uh, time and all that. And even by the time I was suspended, we got married because him, he was able to finish. I was suspended when I, when I was in fourth year and he was in fourth year. Mm -hmm. We were doing the same course. So we, we got married and we had our first child, uh, yeah, and life was going on for us. Yeah, I think yeah. it's important to note that you were crossing tribal lines at, at that point <laughs> <laughs> also <laughs> with your husband, seeing that he's Luo and uh, you are Kikuyu. What was it like in the, you know, I'm sure you, you at this point, it's probably not an issue, but then, was there anyone sort of discouraging you? Um, let me say that um, honestly and uh, honestly, you know, this this was a friend. You know, when we were at the university, and a good number of of of, of my viewers uh, would bear me, especially those that we were with at Moy University, they would call us just a friend because they knew they knew we were friends. Mm -hmm. And at that particular time, it it didn't ever cross my mind that he was Luo. You know, it didn't um it didn't occur to me that there is anything different about about him. You know, we just had a friendship going and going and going and, and, and you know and before we knew it we were we were so tight and, and you know and, 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 and yeah, we found ourselves really there is no going back mm -hmm. about about issues. So I didn't I didn't even have an opportunity to think about um to think about the tribe the tribe thing. We we didn't have that opportunity. And I think when that now came it came in when now my mother started learning about it because um, you know uh, often times our family we are really friends we are tight with each other my sibling mm -hmm. so you when you're talking of course you'd throw someone's name in there and so my mother one day asked me this can I get to hear about uh, is he I hear his Lou I went to my mother, yeah, 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 and we laughed about it mm. because my mother also is, is not somebody that maybe I could share with. You know, he's from a different, um, you know, orientation in terms of, uh, of, of, you know, the way we can share. So we just, I just let her, you know, uh, with minimum information. But I think I, I really thank God because uh, by the time we were getting married, my family is really was really very supportive, and his family as well. Mm. Um, when, when, because of, uh, because of the way I use my name publicly, that I'm Muroni Uko, mm. I usually get uh, so many people who are intermarried that come to me and they ask me, how, how is, how are you going about it? And you know, um, like some of my friends really have it very tough, mm -hmm. especially uh, when you're having your traditional marriage. There's usually a lot of, right. a lot of tension. Mm -hmm. So, and I really like saying that I really thank God because I, I actually that cannot. Has not been an issue. It, it wasn't. It wasn't. It's important to know that even my, my sister is also married to a Kalenjin. Mm -hmm. So I think my family, family, yeah, it's, it's really diverse, <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I thank God we've not had any any challenges, and also his family, because challenges also should come, you know, probably could come either way, mm -hmm. but also his family, they are really uh, gracious and a very 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 dynamic family and a big family for that matter, mm -hmm. but we haven't had challenges. Wow, yeah. interesting. Now yeah. you've been a champion of education reform in Kenya for for a while. Maybe you can tell us about the work you did with the uh, Elimuyetu Coalition. What what that was all about. Oh, well, I think, um, you know, I, I have a belief in, in, in fairness. I have a belief in fairness. And, and, and like when we were being suspended from the university, it really hit me that at that particular time, um, I've traveled much distances, you know. 
I'm thinking about my background, where I come from, and the way you struggle all the way through primary school, the way you struggle through secondary school, and here you are, I'm a girl, you've made it to the university, but somebody just wants to mess your life just like that. They don't give you a fair chance, they don't give you a hearing, and so it, it really stuck me the way, um, the way life is, the way can just, life can just be rendered unfair. And, and, and looking at, at the current education system, there are children who are going through the same. They might not be suspended from any uh, framework, but the system makes itself not accessible to them for circumstances that they are not responsible for, and and that is what that that's what um, really I, I I took up I took up a burden because I know for sure I am everything I am because of God's grace and education. Mm -hmm. Really, education can transform anybody if it really transformed me, mm -hmm. and so I would wish this good thing to happen to every child out there. And, and when I see imaginary barriers placed there either by government or placed there even by the people that are in charge of the education system, mm -hmm. it, really, it, it, really, um, it really strikes me. And I would say that we have really made a, and a serious contribution as a limited coalition because a good amount of, of the things that we see are, are, you know, are a, a result of the pressure that, that we have been able to put. Mm -hmm. I remember... Um, uh, sometime in 2015, in 2015, uh, actually it was in 2016, in, in January, I was put in cells, and it, you know, I just don't know how government w does not like seeing things from, from, from some perspectives. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely not fair for anybody to charge 100,000 at school fees. It, it's not fair. Yeah, and you've been quite vocal about, uh, you know, that, that, that yeah. schooling should be free for both primary and secondary yeah. education. Yeah, because, um, and especially when I, when I went around campaigning, I was, I was vying for women here in Nairobi. And when you visit the slums, when you visit Madari, when you visit Kibra, you, you, you don't live there the same person that, that, that you got there. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you see children, very brilliant children, you know, they, they just, they just not going to school. And you, and you wonder, I mean, where is the system? Why isn't the system responsive to these children? They, they, they are brilliant and there is so much that can happen to their life. Mm -hmm. But just because they will miss out on this amazing and life-changing opportunity. That is why. And I think wha a, a good amount, the, 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 when, I see, um, when I saw Jubilee and, and NASA, everyone standing on the podium and, and saying secondary school is going to be free. Mm -hmm. I think I was, I was the happiest person because I know it is a journey. We, we've come from far with it. Mm -hmm. Some of us have lost um, some things and, 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 and we really lost friends even within the same circles of government because there are people who think that now probably because you come from the same tribe as probably the government of the day. Mm. There are some things that you should not be able to say, you know, and it is not like that. Mm. I wish people would see this from a very objective point of view of saying that government of the day, we want every child in school, and I know for sure there is something that can happen because if government can regulate a good amount of, of, of things charged at the school level, if only there can be a little bit more of efficiency mm -hmm. in the manner in which um, you know, things are done at the school level. We can open it up to so many people. And even now I know um, the battle is far from won, because it is one thing for a political establishment to say that uh, secondary school, for example, is going to be free. Mm -hmm. It is yet another for us to get there. Yeah, Why? Because even in 2003, primary school was said to be free. But it is not free even as, as, as we sit here now. I walk around and, I'm, uh, and I see people, um, uh, yeah, Uko, you tell us school is free, but this school is charging 800 shillings, it's charging 2,000 shillings, mm -hmm. so it is not free. Mm -hmm. and, and for sure, me, I know there are some families that cannot raise 2,000 shillings. Don't even tell me that uh, it, is, it is their responsibility because they gave birth. No, that is not a development talk. Mm -hmm. What we are saying is that the moment every child lands into this country, our constitution talks about free and compulsory secondary. I mean, it is not even compulsory in the constitution, but it's free, free, free education. basic education. And yeah. basic education ranges all the way from ECD level to secondary school level. Mm -hmm. At least there is there's something that can be done to make sure that every child at least accesses, you know, education. Mm -hmm. This thing called education is life changing. And I have seen it changing lives of people, people that I know, mm -hmm. and, and myself. And so I would wish it on every other child and I would go any length to make sure that what at least I can be able to do, any contribution that I can make mm. to make sure that the government of the day delivers this thing called education, I will do it.
Yeah, and it's a uh, very noble work that you've done, but perhaps uh, since we're just about out of time here, might be someone watching who is uh, in your shoes where you were while you were in your campus days and, you know, maybe just starting up their journey of uh, advocacy. Yeah. What type of advice would you give to someone like that? Well, one of the things that I would tell them is that advocacy or having, having a job out of advocacy is not easy. You must be consistent. And two, you must not argue from a compromised point of view. Some of the, uh, one of the biggest challenges we've had with civil society is that you see people tend, tending to dance to tunes of, of particular, you know, of particular governments or, and so on. If you have a message, and this is what we have done over time, if we have a message and that message is the truth, we will say it. Whether it supports the government, well and good. Mm -hmm. Whether it does not support the government, well and good. But be the middle ground be the mirror that society, say what the society wants, you, you know, because civil society is the representative of society, you know, you, you, you are the voices of the society. What does that child or what does that disadvantaged parent in those remote areas, in those marginalized areas want to hear? Mm -hmm. Do they believe that they are let down? Do you have evidence that they are let down? If the answer is yes, then proceed and get it for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, I think also, I would, I would have a message for those that, that probably are in my situation because also at this particular time when, when we are in, uh, we usually say and we joke around it, especially uh, because we have a community called the intermarried community mm. of Kenya mm. and we usually joke about it, that we have a very, very, very good life until all of you decide that it is a political time mm. and decide that you want to go, uh, you know, your various ways. Yeah. But I think for, for, for me is, is, is just to say that really um, th we, we are coexisting. We are coexisting. Now the differences you see are just because of political political issues, but they should actually not affect the way you stay with your brother. They should not affect the way you stay with your neighbor, mm. because there really isn't anything for you. Truth is that there is no Kikuyu that won. It is Uhuru that won. Mm. And there is no Luo that lost. It is Raila that lost. Mm. You know. So at the end of the day, live well with your neighbor, yeah. live well with your friend, and live well with your family, mm. and do your work. Yeah, that's yeah. very, very, very well put. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, out of time, but of course, uh, Janet Mudoni Ogo has been our guest today. Hope that she's provided you with some inspiration uh, for your week. We're going to have some more music from Carlos Kiba next here on Power Breath.